Good morning, everyone. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Carl Sandoval, and uh, I'm going to do a uh, video today that would be of interest to all you Eddie Van Halen aficionados. Um, so, before I get started, let me just say that, uh, again, my name is Carl Sandoval. I am a master luthier, which is a guitar builder, fabricator, guitar repairman, uh, modifier. I mean, I, there's so much that I do with, with guitars in general, as well as uh, working on bass, basses and acoustics. But uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to share a little bit of, of my experiences with uh, rock and rollers, you know, through my career, which has been actually pretty long. Uh, I've been blessed with a long career. I've had uh, many uh, ups and downs, but uh, along this path and journey, I was uh, fortunate enough to talk with, meet, and sometimes even play with some of these, uh, play guitar along with some of these uh, famous rockers. Uh, when I knew them, they weren't actually famous yet. They were good, very good, and well-known within the community uh, from the San Gabriel Valley and the surrounding areas around there. So, I mean, there was a plethora of uh, musicians and guitarists that came out of this uh, community. But uh, one that stands out among many is a gentleman named Eddie Van Halen, and I think we're all familiar with this particular style of guitar. This is called a Megazone, and uh, it's got quite a story behind it. And um, the way I'll introduce this guitar is, is by explaining a little bit about it. Um, when I was working with Charvel's, we went through a few uh, few guys that wanted to learn the trade and had some experiences, and and along comes this one one uh, one gentleman named Jerry Sewell, very unique and brilliant young man, and um, he was from Tennessee, and. Uh, you know, when you first meet these guys, you don't really know who they are or what they know or what they do. But, you know, I was already on board with Wayne and, uh, you know, I welcomed Jerry and, and we just kind of hit it off. And he was a good guy. He was super cool, super cool and imagination and gifted with ideas that was just phenomenal. Well, eventually, um, after he started, he got put into the wood shop. And uh, from there he learned, you know, uh, apparently he had some woodworking experiences and he, he ran all the machinery. He ran the overarm pin router, the joiners, the thickness planers, drill presses, sanders, you name it. He was the wood shop guy for us um, in a small 1,000 square foot building at the very beginning. This was just right after the Charvels on Arrow Highway. Uh, uh, I remember a street named Gladstone, so it was either, uh, it was on Gladstone, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, anyway, in this building is where Charvel's was, and uh, Wayne ran, ran everything and was quite well at doing it, in my opinion. Uh, Wayne, being an expert guitar builder, you know, gave Jerry a little bit of training, and Jerry was off and running and just routing all our bodies that we were making and uh, working on necks and all the woodworking. So anyway, um, you know, during during his stay uh, with us at Charvel's, he started to develop some of his guitar bodies. And this happens to be one of them. This was designed, and you can quote me on this, this was designed by Jerry Sewell. And, um, but this particular rendition of the original model is different. This is the design that I remodified, 
And let me say that again. I remodified his original design for my liking. Uh, I, I really considered his design as being really classy and unique and futuristic and just cool and would look great as a rocker guitar, you know, painted and, and just built, you know, with a nice neck and so forth. So let me just, let me just inform you uh, about what changes were made. When, when I saw the model, Jerry brought it to me and he just kind of presents it to me, says, check this out, what do you think? You know, and, and you got to remember when you first make original designs like this, you pretty much just draw, draw them on wood and then you cut them out with a bandsaw and then use a, a variety of sanders and um, spindle sanders and whatnot to, to get the final shape. And uh, of course he had to use the router with some templates that we already had to do the basic routes which we are already doing, which is the humbucking route and the tremolo route. You can see in the back we got the tremolo cavity and right here and uh, the neck pocket, which is right here. But um, the, the design that Jerry did, uh, it was, this is straight, as you can see, this, this has a straight back end to it. And that was my idea in redesigning what Jerry had, which was he had it curved here. This was like a curved radius. And for some reason, I felt that, that oh, it just kind of didn't go with the whole design because there was a lot of straight lines. And, uh, you know, in building guitars, sometimes uh, things aren't really done in perspective. So one of the things was all these lines, all these angles that you see here, here, and here, they're pretty much, and then at the, the bottom horn, they're, they're pretty much like when it was first designed, they weren't really, you know, lined up with each other. So that was another thing that I did, a change number two, where I straightened up and made all these angles the same. And uh, the last thing that I did on this was I dropped, I dropped this arm and uh, it was it was just a little too close so when you're playing guitar up here you're soloing it, it, you would knock on the top of the, the uh, arm here the lower arm so I dropped this arm down and those were the basically the main three changes that I did of course you can you can have a variety of different setups you can go with a couple of humbuckers you can go with a non tremolo if you wanted but um, another thing that I did, well, I guess there's more than three. There's a fourth one here where I put the volume control right here on this V. And so that involved making a route back here to accommodate uh, access to the volume pot. The output jack was put in this position right here. So having the volume pot here for me on my design kind of changed the guitar and eliminated any switches or knobs on the face of the guitar. So those were the changes that I had made and um, you'll see evidence of it when you look at the guitar that I sold to Eddie Van Halen. And uh, Eddie saw this guitar, he liked its uniqueness and he bought it. However, when he purchased it, I had a headstock on it that was um, set up differently. It was like, um, I believe it was four top, two bottom on, on the headstock. It wasn't all inline. And he wanted me to change the headstock to an inline, six inline like a Strat. So I did something real crude. I draw, drew him a, a basic plain looking off and he said yeah let's go with that it worked but the main thing was it was six in line he liked to have the strings uh, just stretch right over the nut with minimal angle onto the tuning pegs but anyway just to begin this Eddie Van Halen uh, issue and an experience that I had was I wanted to introduce this Megazone 
and just talk a little bit about it. The one that he bought was ash, and uh, it wasn't swamp ash. It was the, just a typical ash, and it was rather heavy. Uh, this body here was, uh, I added some alder wings on it because I had a large piece of ash, and then I didn't have enough to make the full body, and I, you know, I like to use, utilize a lot of my wood and not let it just sit and waste, and so um, I made, uh, made this one with some alder uh, tips on the ends, on the sides. But anyway, that's the Megazone, and those are some of the tips about it when it was first designed. If you hear otherwise out there, you know, just take it with a grain of salt, and that's just the way life is. We can't police the world, and, you know, sometimes people like to take credit where credit isn't deserved. And, but nonetheless, you know, jumping on a bandwagon seems to be something that everybody does. And uh, I don't think people mean anything by it. I don't think they mean harm. But, you know, what I just spoke of is literally the truth on the guitar as an experience that I witnessed and was actually in during the time when I uh, worked with Wayne Charvel in the first thousand square foot industrial building. Um, uh, and uh, it was in San Dimas. <clears throat> so um, anyway, regarding uh, Eddie Van Halen, okay, as I had mentioned, he had bought the yellow guitar. Now, by the way, on that guitar, I built the whole guitar, but I did not paint it. Uh, I was still kind of like learning, and at, during that time, Wayne Charvel painted it uh, what we termed as Banana Burst. It's basically uh, like a competition <laughs> drag race yellow. Uh, it was, I wanted to expose some of the ash that was in the center and the back of the guitar, but the, the sides were opaque and um, they're usually opaque because you wanna, when you glue a neck onto a neck pocket, which I started doing, you wanted to hide all the lamb lines with a solid color and that's what I did. But uh, anyway, so Eddie saw this guitar and uh, he wanted to buy it. So, you know, being a guitar builder and making guitars, I sold it to him and uh, the price was extremely reasonable. Uh, I'm thinking, uh, if I recall, it was like around the $600 range. And back in the day, this was like in the, this was in the late 70s. This was, uh, I had worked up uh, up to 1979 with uh, early 1979 with Charvel's but you know then I wanted my own so <clears throat> this is about the time when I was working with Randy and George Lynch and a lot of other rockers from the area Tracy G and and of course Eddie Van Halen, Michael Anthony, Tommy Gervin uh, just to name a few and uh, now like I said earlier these guys weren't really signed yet they were just great great musicians on their way. But uh, so anyway, getting back to the Eddie Van Halen story, he bought my yellow burst, the Megazone, the banana burst. And uh, of course, like I'd mentioned earlier, we changed the, the headstock. And um, when he came to pick it up after it had been modified, this was uh, right around, it was that time when he was on tour with the Rolling, the Van Halen was on tour with the, the, the Rolling Stones. And he showed up in a t-shirt that had the big uh, mouth on it with the, the lips and tongue and all that, you know. And um, it, was, it was kind of a, it was shocking to me because one of the first things I thought about was that, you know, I'm really, I'm really fortunate. Here's a guy that I kind of knew casually prior to him being signed. And uh, he's going to come down to my small shop on Columbia. It's when I was in the, this was the same fourplex that I used to do my work in, a double garage, half of a double garage where I built uh, Randy Rhodes custom dot V, Sandoval dot V. And uh, so he comes down and, and I'm just ecstatic and just shocked and excited that, you know, this guy's going to come down to my house. But, you know, I wasn't struck with stardom. I mean, I, I, uh, 
I appreciated and, and just felt great for him, you know, that he was in that position. So he shows up, and it was like an early evening, late afternoon, Saturday. And, uh, and you know, I get these crazy thoughts, and here I'm thinking, well, what's this guy, what does he want to come over to my pad for? You know, when he could, I'm thinking he's going to go out to Hollywood somewhere and just party it up and just, you know, live the life of a rocker out there, you know, checking out and watching other bands and having a drink, whatever, you know, something, just what these guys used to do. And, uh, but he chose to come down and, and uh, spend an evening, you know, with me. And we, we just shopped, we talked guitar shop. And I remember him showing up in some funky old white little car. And you gotta remember, this is like the real, real early days of Van Halen. He was already signed and being on tour. And uh, he shows up and he comes out, you know, decked out in Levi's and black leather jacket, his long hair, super thin, you know, rockers are always really thin in my book. And, uh, you know, he's lighting up, lighting up a cigarette and, you know, and I greet him and, and we, we walk up to him into my humble little fourplex and um, I take him into the house and we just, you know, doing all the small talk like, hey man, thanks for coming down, you know, and, and uh, it's good seeing you and you know, I, you know, and then he starts to tell me he just got off this tour with the Rolling Stones, and and uh, and you know, I I had to ask him. I, I had to go, man. Well, why did you choose to come down here? You know, I I knew he was going to pick up his guitar, and that was his reason. But you know, he could have done that any day, or sent down a roadie or somebody, a friend, to pick it up. But he chose to come down, and we had met before. Uh, and uh, he had come into Charvel's, and I used to play the Pasadena Civic along with their band, Van Halen. Uh, and I was in a band called Smokehouse. And, uh, but uh, anyway, you know, I, I asked him, I go, well, why, why are you here? Why, why aren't you out, like, you know, out in Hollywood somewhere going to the Rainbow Whiskey or whatever? And he goes, man, I, I'm just like burnt out. I'm really burned out. I'm tired of the road. I just like, I just want to have a quiet evening. He says, you can only take so much where people, you know, everybody's patting you on the back and yeah, you're the greatest and all right, Van Halen, you know, it, it's just like a, he said it was like a total, you know, everybody's constantly just complimenting you, which is a good thing because he definitely earned it. But you know, the rottiness and the, the, the loudness and the chaotic and of all the fans and the noise and the lighting and the rockers and the, all the, the personnel that work for his Van Halen entity, you know, I mean, it just, I think after a while it got to him and he wanted to have a, just a quiet, peaceful evening talking guitars, which is what he loved. So, you know, that kind of blew me away and I felt kind of honored because, you know, he chose you know, my humble abode to come over and 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 and, uh, and uh, just shoot the shit, so to speak. And so we did just that. He came in, and I, I had uh, at that time, and like I say, I was sharing half of a garage with another tenant, and then uh, part of my shop was in my my room, my bedroom, where I had like my desk and. I kind of emptied out my closet and I used my half of my closet to hang my guitars as they were drying after I painted them. And uh, what I did was I put a bunch of guitars that I had there from customers and my own personal guitars and guitars that I was building. I had them all spread out, including his Banana Burst. But he had already played the Banana Burst and he, you know, he picked it up and wanted to check it out with the, the new hits edge dock and everything which he did and but uh, we just kind of it was cool it was calm you know he just kind of kept letting up cigarettes throughout the night and he always had a cigarette in his mouth or on the headstock or in his hand you know as he's talking to me and uh, you know we're talking about uh, different companies that make guitars and back then there wasn't as many as there are now you had your major companies, you had Gibson and Fender and, you know, you had, uh, you know, some of the off brands like Hagstrom and, you know, uh, there was Epiphone and, and 
you know, Framus and, and you know, all the uh, harmony and silver tone and this and that. And, and I had them all spread out, even some of the customs that I had built. So they were, you know, we got 335s, we got strats, tallies, the Megazone was there. And one of the things, and this is the most exciting thing about this evening, I kid you not, this was so awesome. It really taught me a lot. But um, he, um, he would pick up a guitar and he would play it. And no matter what he played, no matter which guitar he played, no matter if it was chords, a little riff, a solo, whatever he did on these guitars of all different brands, boom, it was Eddie Van Halen, the Eddie Van Halen sound. And what it taught me was that the physical nature of the individual develops skills and that's portrayed through his texture, his hardness, his soulfulness, his attack, whether it's the pick attack, his strength, his grip, everything you did on that guitar exposed Eddie Van Halen and his style. They, they all sounded like Eddie, that was just him. And if I would have picked up and played these guitars, which I, I was an average player, I wasn't anything you know fantastic like he was, you know, I, I couldn't sound like, I could try and, okay, he did Eruption or he did this flick and I could try to imitate it or the fan picking and it wouldn't sound the same because the feel, the strength, the texture, like I say, the, the, the attack of it all, it's in him. It's in every muscle fiber and every part of who he is. It, that's it, man. And, and you know, Nowadays, you get a lot of people that are imitating him, and it's going to be just that. It's just going to be an imitation. And I know people don't like to claim that that uh, they're Eddie. They won't. No one will ever be Eddie. Eddie Van Halen is a total unique entity in his own. Just like Jimi Hendrix is. Just like Jeff Beck is. Just like Eric Clapton is. Mike Bloomfield, and on and on and on. They are all different they all have their own identity and uh, so we will always see imitators and that's it'll just stay right there uh, in, in my opinion and yeah they might have distortion and they might have a, a, a an imitation strat you know that looks like his or they might have their hair cut like him or they might be as thin as he was or you know whatever but they will never ever be the Eddie Van Halen. He was a super, super gifted guitar player that floored me. And uh, I've got other stories about him, that, which I'm not going to talk about now because, well, like when I first saw him, when I first met him, when I used to see him, I mean, I've got endless amount of stories about a variety of different rock stars and circumstances and things that went on, went on in my career. This is just one of them that I wanted to share with all you Eddie Van Halen fans. One of the things that, that kind of bugs me is when, you know, somebody in their mind, in their innocence, or maybe not, they, they go, well, who do you think's a better guitar player? You know, this question is asked. And then they'll post a name. They'll say, uh, Eddie, Jimmy, Randy, you know, they, they want to hear a comparison and who's better. But, you know, I hear that and I see that and I'm like, really? What, what kind of a... I'm going to say it straight up. It's just a lame-ass question. You never w want to compare and, and then say who's better. They are all great. All these guitar players, you know, from Z uh, Deep Purple, The Who, Led Zeppelin, ZZ Top, Aeros, they all have their own identity. Let's leave it as that, people. Give them the credit do to them because of who they are and when you make a comparison and I've heard this time and time and time again and I excuse me for ranting about this but you know this is just something that I, I've always thought and felt that like you know stop the comparison everybody is great in their own style leave them alone stop right there 
please don't get offended by the statement I just made. It's, you know, it, it's almost like somebody wanting to toot their own personal little horn. And, you know, come on, you know, it, 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 let's just get real. Leave these guys be at who they are, what they are, and what they do, and they are great at it. So anyway, getting back to Eddie Van Halen, I'll tell you, that was an experience that uh, I'll never forget. It's a memory, and uh, I, I really didn't want to take it to my grave. I wanted to share this with you just to give you one of, I'm sure, a million different stories because Eddie Van Halen was everywhere speaking to everybody and, and, and in all sorts of different circumstances and settings. So, But this was one of my stories. Uh, I'm proud of it, and I'm very fortunate that I got to experience this story, and I'm fortunate that he bought one of my guitars. I mean, how many guitar builders out there can say that, well, I sold a guitar to Eddie Van Halen, you know? Not that I want to toot my horn, but to me, it was uh, a very full of gratitude and appreciation that what I'm doing as a guitar builder and a master luthier, even when I was younger, people would recognize it, famous people, and uh, they would approach me and we'd have conversations and, and create experiences. And that's a good thing. It's a fun thing. It's, it's an experience that I'll never forget. So I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you for listening to me ran on here about some of my feelings. Now, if, you're, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, by all means, join us. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe also to my Patreon page. Uh, I will be posting videos on YouTube, but I'm going to start posting more intricate and intense videos on my Patreon page. And uh, YouTube will eventually become just a, an, uh, like an exposure to my Patreon page because I do want to get on Patreon more and more and make it my main source of you know, being able to watch what I do. I will still be in remain and remain on YouTube, but Patreon, I'm really trying to work at it and get it going. Uh, check me out on Instagram. Uh, you can get on my Facebook and check me out on Facebook. Uh, I have a Q&A series of videos that are, I've already started. Uh, I'm going to come up with a, the second one soon. And uh, But I need questions, so if you can s email me a question at Carl at carlsandoval.com and maybe it'll come up on my Q&A videos. Uh, I'm going to continue to post Carl Sandoval custom guitar building tips. I think we're on number 12 going on 13 now and these are little tips that you should hold on to because they will help you at one time or another. Uh, also my series, uh, check out my series on YouTube on building of the Star Guitar, the Sandoval Custom Star Guitar. Great information there, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it and, and it'll inspire you. Also, for all of you who are making contributions to my PayPal account, thank you so much, I appreciate it. If, if, if you feel within your heart to help uh, my cause in creating these videos, which do take time, by the way, and I am sharing a lot of long-time career information, I, I would appreciate a small donation if you could. Uh, it all adds up and it's going towards the making of future videos and upgrading and maintaining my equipment. And uh, you know, it's not like I'm making a total living off of my social media, but every little bit helps. So if you feel inclined to make a contribution, a donation, I would appreciate it. Just go on my PayPal account, use my email, carl at carlsandoval.com and help out. I would truly appreciate it. All right, man, I'm going to uh, end this uh, video, call it a wrap. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I was happy to share this experience with you. And there are more to come. Uh, so God bless. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your attention and support. You take care now. Bye-bye.